Chicken liver parfait has been responsible for a number of Campylobacter outbreaks. I'm Dr Lisa Ackerley from the Royal Society of Public Health and I'm going to be explaining how you can actually make chicken liver parfait in a safe way without risk of causing Campylobacter. Right, Jamal, there, there are two methods for making chicken liver parfait, aren't there? Yes, there is two methods. Right, so one of them is where you actually um, cook the chicken livers first and then add all the other ingredients and blend it. Yeah. And the other method is where, which is what you're going to show us. Yeah. Just explain how that's going to work. Oh, the other method is like, you, you melt the butter separate, mm -hmm. and you melt it down and cool it. And you take the vegetable uh, uh, olive oil and sweat the rest of the ingredients yep. and you cool them down. Mm -hmm. So after that you mix the cooled ingredient together with the cream mm -hmm. and the eggs. You blitz together with the chicken liver and you cook that in the oven. All right, so at that yeah. point the chicken liver is actually raw. The chicken liver is raw right. and you're going to mix the cold ingredient yep. into the chicken liver right. and you cook in the oven. So you cook it in the in oven. The bambri, yeah. So um, your control, your critical control with the, with the cooking is actually handled in the oven. In which the oven. Means, so we're, we're actually looking at the core temperature being above 75 when it, when it comes out of the oven. That's the point, okay, yeah. let's see how we get on then. Right. What, what I'm really interested in here is how the science can blend with good food because so often we're told that we can't have something because it's unsafe and what I'd really like to happen is for us to eat wonderful food but know that it's safe. So that's the purpose of the experiment. Okay, right, now before we get to the chicken livers, which we know could have lots of Campylobacter in them, yep. what you're going to do is, is prepare everything else so there's a minimum amount of contamination later on. So that's really good practice. Yeah. So show me how you're going to prepare the mould. Yeah. First we're going to line the mould you know, with the right. clean film. Clean mould there. Okay, so, um, so next you're going to add the butter to this container, aren't you? Yeah. So let's go and do that over here and then it'll all be ready for the raw livers to yeah. be mixed with it. Right, and you're leaving some spare, are you? Yeah, yeah? yeah? thank you. Okay, so that's now. finished. Are we finished with this now? Finished with that now. We're going on to the dirty going process the dirty now. Process. Okay, right. Chopping board. Right. Okay, so you've got the red chopping board because you're going to put the raw chicken livers the raw on. Raw chicken livers right. on. Right, okay. Yeah. And we're very conscious, aren't we, that the raw chicken livers could have yeah. Campylobacter on them. So that's around about 66% of chickens have Campylobacter, so there's a pretty high chance they're all over those chicken livers Definitely. there. Okay. So these chicken livers are at the bottom of your fridge, aren't they? Yeah, they are not close okay. to any cooked meat. They're right. Separate, clean films, and they're all safe. Very good. Right. So you're going to put some gloves on. When do you use gloves? I won't ever use high contamination food. Right. Just okay. Wear gloves. That's very good because um, the, the the problem when when you're handling something like chicken livers is that yep. the Campylobacter can get under your fingernails, yep. and it's it's much more difficult to get it out. But of course, the the worry with gloves is that people forget to take them off after they've got contaminated. So we know you're not going to do that. You're just going to use those while you're handling the contaminated food. Indeed. Then they're going to go in the bin, and then you wash your hands as well, just in case the the gloves have got nicked at all. Yes. Right. Out. So we're going to need to weigh this. Yes. Yep. Okay. Okay, so we've got the really dirty stuff out of the way now, yes, um, but we've still got raw livers in there and we've yeah. still got some raw eggs. So we've still got to be very aware of where the risks of contamination could That's be, yeah. but blitz away. There we go. We blitz it at very low speed. Okay, so, so you blitz it at a very low speed so we didn't get lots of air in it. In it okay, yeah. what happens next? Oh, we crack our egg inside. Salt. Pepper. So we get our ingredients in the sieve. Okay. That goes in there. Mm -hmm. So we put a piece of cling film here. So this is your raw meat cling film? Yeah, that's my raw meat cling film. Right, okay. Just cover that. So great, so that goes in the bain marie. 
here we put our little container with the warm water. We're going to take our terrine and put it in there. So I think now before the, the tin foil goes on, yeah. it's probably wise to wash our hands just in case there are any bugs on our hands and we don't get that onto the tin Definitely. foil. So that's going to keep all the steam inside, Definitely. help it to cook more evenly. Cook more evenly. Okay, yeah. brilliant. We're going to the oven. Yeah. At 120. 120 so we've got the campylobacter bacter sorted out in the pate itself because it's going to be cooked but obviously where it's been prepared there is a risk of contamination from campylobacter so we've got to just think about some of the spots that need cleaning so obviously the work surface um, but also even the pepper pot because you're using that with your dirty hands the knobs on uh, the, the, uh, the blender, the knobs on the scales, um, and of course, finally, your hands. So we need to then wash those and then decontaminate the taps as well. So to check that the pate is cooked, we're not going to go by colour, we're actually going to take the temperature and we're aiming for 75 degrees C in the core. So. There we are, yep. 75, in fact, it's 76. But interestingly, it's actually quite pink inside, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, so if you went by colour, you might actually overcook it. So the key messages here for making chicken liver parfait is that it can be done safely, but you have to follow some simple rules. And that means cooking it thoroughly all the way through to 75 degrees C or equivalent, and to make sure that you sanitise any surfaces that may have become contaminated. And of course, wash your hands uh, because those are the biggest vehicle of cross-contamination of all.